Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the important role of women in the church, part two. The second question that we have is, why is the role of women so important? Um, How I'm going to approach this question might be different from how everyone else is, but I think that um, the role of women is equal to our male counterparts. There's, there shouldn't be any difference in what we've been called to do or what God has put in our hearts to do. And I love that I was um, reading, I know it was Paul, um, where he was just saying that we are all equal. Hopefully I can try to find that verse. Yeah, so in Galatians 3, um, it says, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you have been baptized into Christ, close yourself in Christ, neither Greek nor Jew, slave nor free, male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So I believe that we are all one. So whether it's to be a pastor, whether it's to be a pastor's wife, whether it be uh, any kind of servant to God, we should honor God in our, the best way in our gifts. And um, I think also women, we bring a special essence as well to the ministry, um, not promoting feminist things, but I feel that women bring some insights and we bring different things that help to enhance the body of Christ. So we should just honor that role and honor what God has um, gifted us with. So that is my response to that question. Hey, bless the Lord. Well, I don't know about chill, but I think as women, that we are among the greatest assets of the church. Amen. I think that we enhance the church. I think that we can look at all the great women in the ministry of Jesus and the women that followed him. And I think that our role is equally as important as our men, male counterparts. And I believe that God has called us as women to be strong. And not only that, if you look at 1 Peter 3, as women, we are the ears equally in Christ. And it's a blessing to be called a woman and to be able to stand in the house of God. And I think if you take women out of the church, there will be no church. <laughs> I think that we celebrate life. We are able to teach our younger women. We are able to teach our girls that are coming up to be strong and to be passionate. And I think we bring a lot of substance. We bring um, able to give them, pass down our knowledge and wisdom. To, the, to younger women, we allow women to, those younger women to stand strong and to stand bold. And I think that all of us are, can testify of another woman that we have stand on their shoulders and another woman that we have cried in their lap and another woman that we can go and talk to and, and be able to get through difficult times. And I think, Washing strong women and washing women as leaders that allow us to be able to stand and to have that confidence. And not only that, God loves his daughters, amen. And he takes good care of them. And look at what God did. Um, God had to put the man asleep just to make us. So that means that God didn't even want nobody to be around when he created us. So he had to create a magnificent, magnificent, I don't know about you, but we are God's masterpiece and we are excellent. <laughs> uh, some person talk about the excellency of God. God made us excellent. Amen. And we just want to bless God. We just want to thank God that he continue to allow us to work continue to serve and thank God. We thank God that we are daughters and we are joint heirs. Amen. We bless the Lord. Um, when I thought about that question, the first thing that came to my mind was like Sister Dana said, God is truly no respecter of person. And I think like back in the olden days, there was maybe the perception that men were greater or more empowered or whatever have you. And I was like, our role is just so important for the fact that we're nurturers by nature. And I feel like that God needs that in the kingdom 
to like when you're birthing something to help to nurture it, to mature it so that it can grow. And another thing that came to my mind, I was like, we're so special to God that when he rose from the dead, he first showed himself to a woman. He could have chose to show himself to anybody, but he chose women because I just felt like he just knew that there was just something special, unique and great within us. So because of that, and that is something that has now gone on over time. So that's why I feel like we are, you would consider the it thing, but I mean, I know that we're not, but we're just that special and important to the body and in the kingdom. And we're needed. We are truly needed. Well, here in Guyana, um, traditionally women are the backbone of the church. And why I say that is that because for all the denominations, regardless of which church you're going, the majority of the congregation are females. And because we have um, such a large female population in the churches, those women, those wives, and even grandmothers are able to bring their families to the church. So we have a lot of churches that are um, that have like a large family base where you would find entire families that are committed to a specific church. And that is because of a strong female in the family. And um, one of the things I like about Church of God of Prophecy here in Guyana is that women are not kept back. We're not held back. We're pushed into whichever position, national positions, pastors in our churches. We have female pastors. And that is something that has been going on for many, many years. So, um, and our women are recognized for the role that they play. So it's not a situation where um, the women are not being recognized or appreciated for the efforts um, that we do within the local churches. So I think because of that traditional background of so many women being in the church from the, from the most, for the most part, from maybe the conception of the church. Um, so, and women, we continue to play that important role even to this day. Hi, so I was thinking about this question for a while. Um, and I just, put myself like I can't speak for anyone else but myself and if it wasn't if I wasn't going to school I was going to church if I wasn't going to dance rehearsal I was going to church if I wasn't doing anything else it was church um as I got older if I wasn't going to work I was going to church it was like school work church school it was like a song right it, and it all boils down to I spend majority of time in church if it's not anything else it's I spend majority of my time in church and there's nothing wrong with that. So I was just thinking of who I met in the church, right? I agree with everyone. Um, church is the, women are the backbone of church, right? They're, if you look around, look in the congregation, it's mostly women, but I met mothers in the church. I met people who I call my best friend in the church. I met people who I call my sister in the church. I met, I meet people that I call my aunt in the church and those women are vital and they play such a huge role in um, just whether it was an older mother who, like Sister Brown, who taught me how to treat myself like a lady, how to dress, um, whether it was someone else that, you know, helps me out to get a job. Um, I've had a couple of mother figures and sister figures that did that for me as well. Um, I have people who I'm just best friends with now who we grew up together. We, we still talk to each other and encourage each other and we're growing and learning in God. So I feel like women's role in the church is so important because especially for someone who grows up in the church and they spend most of their time in the church there's a place where you can learn to become a woman to become something because i learned so much from those women that i've encountered that i wouldn't be able to learn at home if i didn't have a strong mother or i wouldn't be able to learn at school if i didn't have strong teachers so let's say i didn't have i was blessed to have that but let's say i didn't right those women are there and they're in their place there um, to help us and to encourage us and to lift us up and teach us how to do this and teach us how to do that. So I think um, women in essence are teachers, right? And they help us to develop and become who we are. And I am very happy for all the women that I've met in my church and in other churches that helped me become the woman I am today. 
so. Okay, so, so, so I came from, um, from this perspective. I thought it started thinking about the, the woman in the Bible. And I thought about um, the young maiden who, who pointed the leper Naaman to the prophet so that he could be healed. I thought about Deborah, who was a judge. I thought about Miriam, who took her tambourine and led the woman dancing. You know, I thought about the woman of Samaria who brought revival and come see a man. I thought about like, I think it was Sister Dana just talked about how um, the woman uh, ran, you know, and say he's risen while these disciples were hiding out, you know. And I thought about it and I thought, you know, women have always played an important role in, in God's program. And so we are still, I hear Jeremiah saying, you know, call for the wailing woman, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so we are still the prayer warriors. We are still the worship leaders. We are still the counselors and the preachers and the nurturers, you know? So we've always played a role. And I think my sister Kate said that, and daddy loves his daughters, right? <laughs> because his daughters are significant. And I thought about the fact that if, at least in my church, if all the women in my church sat down and never did another thing, oh my. <laughs> we know we know Jesus has said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church, but it's gonna have a it's gonna have a rough time <laughs> getting there if we all sat down and never did another thing. So definitely we 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 have an important role in God's program in God's church. All righty. So I feel that we should acknowledge the fact that no one can experience spiritual health alone and apart from one another as members of body of the Christ, as the members of the body of Christ. Um, the role of women is very important. And I think about 1 Corinthians 12, 21 through 23, where it says that the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the and the parts that are that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. So I feel like as a body of Christ, um, we as women were part of the earliest part of the church as someone stated um, Eve was there at the beginning um, once God took her out of the rib and so women served a great role in the development of the church we serve in the development because we were told to be fruitful and to multiply um, we have the gift of helps we have the ability to be hospitable mm -hmm. um, we have that caring nature as sister rose said to provide for the needy um, to go be missionaries like sister mckay to give um, love to children who've been abandoned and rejected like myself and we affirm and support the leadership in the church. I don't know about you, but for me, we are the right of dies in the church. We are the loyal ones that are still there to the end. And no matter what, you, you go to conventions and you hear people like, you know, fellas, we got to bring up the men's ministry attendance a little higher than the women's ministry because every year they keep having these competitions and they're packing out um, in these hotels. You know, so we as women are always there. Um, and so who wouldn't want that support system? Um, we are the cheerleaders of the church. And so if the men are down, we were created to be the help meet. Whether we're married or not, we're still there as a help meet to be the cheerleaders, to help those who are um, weak and those who are, you know, not pushing like they should be, we, we're there to back them up. And then when we ourselves feel weak and down, we have another lady coming along saying, sister, come on now, come on now. You know, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You know, you can, you know, greater is he that's in you. So we are constantly pumping each other. We are the hype men of the church, the hype women. Um, so ride or dies. I guess my point of view is a little bit different. Um, I've been accused by my husband of being a feminist, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I, again, feel like we are one, we are the best thing that we're ever made. We are better than a slice of bread. You know, the best thing since sliced bread, we are. And for me, and maybe this is what my husband probably doesn't like, appreciate too much, but I see a dichotomy in us that is amazing. So as much as I can say I am that nurturing person, I am that strong person. As much as I am, I could be fluid, I give you structure. As much I, I'm the hard and I'm the soft. 
and I can do it seamlessly. And I can go from one to the other without stopping, without missing a beat. And that's what I think essentially women are. We encompass everything, every adjective that you can think about, that's us. That's us. And we do it without even thinking. So as much as I embrace my feminine side, I embrace my masculine side. And I think that is, there's a place for all of that, especially in all these different roles that we play as mothers, as wives, as the backbones, we need it all. We can't be too laid back. We can't be too strong. And we find that middle ground that is just essentially women. So I am a feminist and I, so I will stand by that because I think that we are really, really great. And God knew exactly what he was doing when he made us the way that he made us. We have intuition that we don't even know about. Why, how, how do we know this? That's not me, that's God. And he chose to give it to us. He said, you will know, and God gives you the gift that he know you'll use well. That's my, that's my, my, my thinking. He gives gifts and talents to people that he know will use it the right way. He chose to give us that because he knew that we would use it appropriately. That's amazing. That's amazing. You have so many different things that's very exclusive. People, what is said are exclusive to women. And he gave that to us. He said, that's for you because I know you're going to use it well. I know you're going to be positive with that. And I just love being a woman. I think we're great. Um, I don't think we're better than men, but we are great in our own right. And so our role in the church is everything. We're not only the support system, but we are the system. We are the system. Thank you. Um, when I think about the topic about the, the importance of the role of women, I think about women being the beauty of the world. That, that which completes everything. And it, it makes me go back to, to Genesis. After God finished making the beautiful garden of Eden, he made Adam, he made all the animals, he made the planets and everything. And then God said, you know what? Something is missing. And that something was the woman. And so we are the, we, 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 we are the piece that completes. Um, I don't think there is any competition between men and women when it comes to roles who's better or less. I think God created us with our own uniqueness. And we fit into our role that nobody else can get into. For, for example, women, we are talkers. They say women talk a lot. We just talk. But you, if you check to see when God wanted the message to go to Samaria, he went to a well and find a woman and give her the water of life. And they said she went running to take that message. You know, when, when Jesus wanted to, everybody to know, you know what, I'm risen. He looked for, for the Marys and they went running with the message. So God created us with our own uniqueness. We are compassionate. As women, we are producers. You give us raw material and we produce. You give us, you, you, you give us raw goods and we produce a dinner for you. you. You give us a house and we give you a home. So we are we, we're the piece that comes completes everything. We're the piece that makes things work. And in the church, when we come in, we come with the same uniqueness. Um, and you find that the woman is there, she's the mother, and she's there as the nurturer, and then she's there as the teacher. And she just completes, and she's still the cook, and she's still the cleaner. And so we just complete things. And, and I think we're so unique. I, I know God... I love the fact that God created me as a woman. Um, my national overseer always told me, um, he says, Roxanne, if you were a man, um, you would have been the national overseer. And I always say to him, I am glad that I'm a woman because as a woman, I am not limited in any way because I can still do whatever God wants me to do in the state that I am in. And so we're beautiful, we beautify, we complete, we produce, and we do all of that in the church. As one person says, take the woman out of the church. My God, the church is done. And, you know, when I looked at the fact that God chose to, to refer to the church as a woman, because he calls her the bride of Christ. And, and so we are special privileged 
and honored. So ladies, hats off to us. We're beautiful. Um, that's a very tough one to follow. <laughs> Thanks, mommy. Um, so I would say women are very, very flexible. That's how I would describe us. We are important to the church because we bring balance. And I think that's what everybody was saying. If it is 50-50, we can do it. If it is 20-80, we will, we will be that 80 and come the extra way. If it's zero to 100, we will still bring that balance. So I believe we're important in the church because we are so flexible that we will fit and make sure things happen how it is supposed to and how we think God wants it to, no matter what. So I think women are important because of the balance that we bring. Praise God. Praise God. So much of what I wanted to share has already been said. Um, definitely... We are here, women are here in the church to balance out the church. But what I would also want to add to all that has been so beautifully said is that God has called us to give birth to purpose in the church. Um, we can see through from Eve all the way to Mary, how Mary was the one to carry <laughs> the Messiah, carry the promise that was prophesied, that was prayed for, that was cried out for. And I dare to say that we are still those, even those of us that are unable to give birth to actual physical children, our role in the church is to birth purpose, is to um, not only birth it, but to nurture it as was said, and to see it grow and develop into what God has called it out to be. So we have a mighty role in the church and it's already been said, but I'm going to say it again. Um, if it's not for women, what, where would the church be? That's why we know that God knew. God knew from the beginning that Adam needed an Eve. God knew from the beginning that in order for the Messiah to be birthed, that he had to do it through a woman. Have you ever thought that Jesus could just have, he's God, right? He could have just said, let me just come, bam, and I'm here. Let me die for you guys. But he decided, he was so strategic um, to be formed oh my God, form himself in the womb of a woman and be birthed from her to go forth, to grow and to know what it is to be a human being on the earth. Oh my God, women, we are great. Women, we are phenomenal. Women, we are strong. Women, we are called, appointed, anointed. I don't wanna preach, but just thinking about it is just amazing that we are truly the intention of God to replicate the purpose of God throughout the earth. God bless. Speechless. My one word for us, just because. He could have called the church anything. He called us his bride. Statistically, um, women make up about 85% of our local congregations. Um, and that's some of the peer review information that's out there. Uh, but 14% make up the leadership within our churches. And a greater proportion of those women are the most effective in ministry globally. Because he could have called us anything, but he took his time and he called us wow men. Wow. Because we are wonderfully, we are wonderfully made. We are incubators who have the um, the capacity to multiply. And I think I don't forget one of our sisters talked about it. That multiplicity factor. Whatever you give us, you get it more and you get it better. No matter what it, no matter what it is. And one major thing that we did talk about that I, I wanted to emphasize before the creation. Of, um, of, of, of women, everything was good. But after the woman was created, even God himself said, very good, just because that's us. So well, there's a saying which said, the hand that rocks the creator rules the world. And going back to Genesis, God says in the second chapter and the 18th verse, it's not good for man to be alone. God said that. It was much for him to take care of all the animals, the trees. There was none compatible, so God decided. So this position we have here, it was given to us by God. 
and we are help meets and we desire to continue to care, to nurture and to do God's work. I'm glad to be a woman and my desire is to take my part in God's kingdom to the best of my knowledge and ability. I thank you. Today, today was a really good day of powerful conversation. <laughs> but this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for coming back. Thank you guys for watching this conversation, powerful conversation. I pray that you were able to get so much information from this video. I'll be back next week with more videos. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys.